Hi there. Now here we've got a question based on a particle sliding down a rough inclined plane that you might like to try. So if you haven't seen this question already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution and explain all the methods to you. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's see how we would do this. Well, first of all, what I'd want to put on is the fact that our particle starts at A and is released from rest. So I'll just mark in an arrow like this to show that it was released from rest, put zero there. And then it gains speed as it travels this distance from A to B, three meters. And at B, let's say it's going at a speed of V. We're going to need to find V on part B here. So as it changes speed, it must be accelerating. Okay, so just mark in a double arrow there and we'll call that A, A meters per second per second. And we're going to need to find A, the acceleration in part A. Now, what I would be thinking of for this part is using basically a SUVAT based equation, S U V A and T, okay? And I would know S, the displacement, it's three meters. U is zero because it started from rest. Now we don't know the final velocity and we need to find the acceleration in part A and we don't have the time. So there's no way that I've got an equation here that can find the acceleration A. So the only way I can do it is by considering using force equals mass times acceleration, Newton's law of motion. And I can get that by looking at the motion down the plane. So I'm going to need to consider the forces acting on the particle. So let's just say we've got our particle somewhere between A and B. Okay, we'll just put it there. And the forces acting on the particle will be its weight acting downwards. We know that has a mass of m, so the weight would be mg, mg newtons. There'll be a normal contact force from the plane, so mark that in there as r, r newtons. Now, it's a rough plane. And as it slides down the plane, remember friction opposes motion. So friction is going to act up the plane. And friction is always equal to the coefficient of friction, mu, times the normal contact force if it is sliding. And it is, okay? So it's reached its maximum, mu r. We know that mu, the coefficient of friction, is a half. So what I'm going to do is just say that this equals a half r newtons. So in order to think about finding this acceleration, as I say, I'm going to resolve down the plane, apply force equals mass times acceleration, but it's going to have the normal contact force r in the equation. So the first thing I need to do is find out what r is. And we do that by resolving perpendicular to the plane. And what I need to put in is a dotted line there, and this angle here is going to be the same as the plane. That's 40 degrees. Okay? So because I'm resolving perpendicular to the plane, I'm going to need to split the weight up into two components because the weight does not act in this direction along this line perpendicular to the plane. So what are those two components? Let's just mark them in. I'm assuming that you're familiar with splitting a force into components. If not, do check out my video tutorials on this. So there'll be one in this direction and there'll be one in this direction. The one that contains the angle, remember, is always cosine. The one that excludes the angle is always sine. So this component into the plane for the weight will be mg cosine of 40 degrees. The one that excludes 
this angle is sine so it's going to be mg sine of 40 degrees okay so hope you've got that I'm going to be taking away the components so you've got to really try and imagine those components on okay there they are again mg cos 40 acts into the plane and mg sine 40 acts down the plane okay let's start thinking then about resolving perpendicular to the plane I'm going to resolve away from the plane taking that as positive that would mean that R will come out positive in my equation so I'm looking at the resultant force in that direction and it's going to be zero because it's in equilibrium relative to the plane in this direction okay so therefore we've got all of R acts away from the plane the frictional force is at right angles to it so it has no effect then we've got to think about the weight remember the weight can be split into two components one into the plane which is mg cosine 40 and the other one is perpendicular to the plane this one will have no effect it's only this one and it acts in the opposite sense to the direction we're resolving so it's going to be minus mg cosine of 40 degrees and because the particle is in equilibrium as I said earlier in that direction it's going to equal zero that resultant force so therefore if we rearrange this R will equal mg cosine of 40 degrees now I could work this out in terms of m taking g to be 9.8 I'm going to just leave that we'll do the calculation uh, on the calculator in the final stages so next I want to resolve down the plane okay so we're going to put resolve down the plane down the plane is positive always resolve in the direction of acceleration which is down the plane okay so what have we got well if we bring back those components again you can see that we've got all of mg sine 40 degrees the component of the weight down the plane okay so that's going to be in the positive sense so we've got mg sine 40 degrees remember the component of the weight into the plane has no effect it's perpendicular to this direction so the only other force we've got is the friction which opposes the motion so that's going to be minus because it's in the opposite sense to what we've got here minus mu r half r but I know that r is mg cosine of 40 degrees and this will be equal to the mass times acceleration because it's now accelerating in the direction down the plane so mass is m and the acceleration is a what we have to find now I can see that m is in every term so I could cancel it out as it's a common factor so we'll divide through by m and that leaves us with the acceleration a so let's just border that off there so if you take g as 9.8 make sure your calculator's in degrees mode you should find that therefore a turns out to be 2.545 and so on and if we give this to three significant figures it's going to be 2.55 and that be measured in meters per second per second so there's part a now for part b we've now got the acceleration we've just found it here and we've got to find out v the speed then of p as it passes through b so we're out to find this one so we need an equation that doesn't involve t and that equation from those variables there is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as okay now all we've got to do is substitute our values in we know that u is zero so it just leaves us with v squared equals 2as or v okay would be equal to the square root of that so v would equal the square root of 2 times the acceleration a which we've just seen is 2.545 
2.545 and so on and that's multiplied by s which is 3 and if you work this out you should find you end up with 3.908 and so on and giving this to three significant figures it's going to be 3.91 meters per second okay to three significant figures 3sf for short okay so i hope that's given you some idea anyway if you were stuck on how to do that